Well, it's time to play again, and boy, um, maybe I get a little carried away sometimes, but I've got a lot to show you today, because realistically, I'm trying to get to where I can build that engine up there, that where I need 500 of those engines, and the factory that I've built has started from the very beginning with the ore. Now, I'm, I'm up to the point now of building all of the items that need to go into the motors, rotors, stators, and that level of work to actually build that motor. And in doing so, I've kind of grown my factory just a little bit more than what I uh, possibly thought. Uh, you see the first floor there, where the blueprinting workshop is? The This is the second floor down and I've expanded it uh, more than just slightly I suppose uh, it's quite quite a bit of distance out here in fact it's almost totally overlapping the warehouse that I have below anyway I've done so in order to get the production levels up to the point where I could guarantee that everything will stay green One of the YouTubers that I uh, that I looked at, I can't, I didn't look up his name before to tell you, but talks about getting things lined up using uh, manifold splitters. The, these are the mergers because they're merging the line uh, going out, and then manifold splitters here in the center to split off the rods to go to the separate machines, and you know, then I put it into these storage units to provide me with a good solid buffer. You'll notice that this is screw production here, and you'll notice another batch of screw production back there. What I noticed is that screw production quickly falls behind because tons and tons of screws are needed with a lot of different assemblies. Like coming up, I have an assembly of, I think it's rotors. Yeah, the rotor. I have it on four by six cards, keeping track of things. The rotor requires five iron rods or 20 per minute, and the screws require 100 per minute. Well, conveyor belts run at, these conveyor belts anyway, run at 470 per minute. So you can see that a few machines can very quickly overload the conveyors that you have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the rotor line now. I need five iron rods and 25 screws to make each rotor. Rotors are output at four per minute and they need a set of lines that put not just constructors, but assemblers in them because they have two inputs each. So I just have to make sure I don't fall off here while I'm building it. Okay, so I kinda of wanna line up the center with the center here. And that's really my only requirement is that the centers stay pretty much straight. And so let's go to the blueprint here. And, and you'll see that I've been also busy building other blueprints. I've built constructor blueprints that have the splitter in the center versus the merger in the center. You put the higher input or output on the sides. So if your machine outputs faster than it receives, in other words, it makes less product than what it receives in product, and one good example would be the copper wire. Copper wire gets 15 input of ingots and produces 30 wire. So in that case, you put the input side on the inside. So you'd put the mergers in the center because it receives less than what it outputs. And so you put the receiving input shares the belt inside. And so I created two different configurations here in case I have the need for a splitter inside. On the merger side, I've got the input coming from the outsides and then coming to the inside and merged in the center, and I have one output line. Now I've got the assemblers, and frankly, they don't give you enough space in the blue printer. I can only put half of the, each line for an assembler. So I've got the inputs coming into the assembler and I don't have any outputs yet. I have to build the outputs. 
So these are the ones that I'm going to build now. I'm still working out some configuration issues with that. So I will do the inputs on the right first and see if I can uh, get this set up. Now it says I can't afford it. I'm missing some iron plate. So I'm going to go have to retrieve some iron plate from one of my storage units. I'm going to nix this one and I'm going to go find some iron plate. There, yeah, this one does plates. So all the plates are being used full speed. I mean, you see them pop in a little bit here, but it just it's just passing straight through. So that is, well, it's good. It just means that I'm not producing enough. And so there's, there's the plates coming in. Now, why am I only producing a little bit, huh? But it's all overloaded. It's only, every machine is overloaded. Ha, huh. okay. With, e with every machine overloaded, it means that the production line after this does not have enough supply because I'm getting plenty of ingots because every machine, every machine is overloaded. And the neat thing about this system is if you leave enough space between them, I can just add another row here and hook it up and away we go. So guess what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add another part of this line see if we can get the plate production up but I could actually add a couple looks like it a couple lines there let's start with a machine here Okay, they are all powered up. Let's go ahead and configure them to make iron plate. And notice they immediately start sprung into action there and started taking in that those ingots and started producing iron plate. So you'll start seeing iron plate. Yep, iron plate coming out of there and going on down the line. Okay, so we've added two more to the line and it's just that easy. Lining them up in this way really, really makes the job a lot easier for you simply because if you leave enough space between each of the factory parts and pieces, you can literally expand a lot easier and faster. So eventually these here will start overloading. Now it's got 33 when it needs three and this number keeps increasing, it'll eventually overload to the point that it the lines input lines will stop and that's really what you want to see you want them working full-time uh, you always always want to see those going full-time and frankly at this point i'm still tempted to make yet another a row of machines here i kind of want to see what what's going on on the other end here when i when i look at this you know it's still not running 100 percent but that looks a little better than it was so it's still not producing enough. My uh, desire for them is bigger than my production. And so, you know, we can go build another level. So that, let's go ahead and do that. While the others are still backed up, we're getting product coming, you know, the ingots coming to these lines. And uh, we've got, you know, production happening here. Well, I think that's a lot better than it was before. Yeah, a lot better than it was before. Now 
I'm back to the beginning. And it looks like my inputs are coming back this direction. Make sure that that's correct. And I want to save some space without falling off the building. So let's move it right to that seam. I think that will get it. Now, one thing I'm noticing is that the assemblers take up more space, so I'm not going to be able to stay in line with those. So I need to make sure I leave adequate space here. Okay, they are lined up. Okay, there's splitters on the outside, so we need mergers on the inside. Okay, and those point out, and those point in. Boy, I didn't quite do that as effectively as I should have. I need to, I need to update my blueprint because these these splitters are going the opposite direction on this side as on the other side. And frankly, I could fix that. No, I can't fix it. No, I can't fix it at all. Okay. I just made them going the wrong direction, but that's okay. I'll just hook them up on opposite sides. Okay, so let's start here. I've got the lanes coming from both directions and the arrow is coming at me. So boom, I'm going to put it there. And my next one, I should be able to just click the arrow until there they go. Air lines on both sides. There. I'm going to make a straight line straight line here. I'm going to raise it up the same height. That looks right to me and it seemed to be wrong before, but it is right. So let's, uh, Let's go find our iron rods. Okay. We have an over abundance of ingots. build another splitter right on top of this one point it all the same directions there. go into there okay ingots already there Okay, let's go make these machines start working. And here we want to make rotors. We're getting iron rods and screws. Boom. Oh, crud. I was supposed to get iron rods, not ingots. I got sidetracked somewhere. What I was trying to do is bring ingots over here because my rod production is pretty much even, is what I determined. And I was bringing the ingots over here to not to hook into here, but to build rods and build enough rods that I could fund these machines. And so my bad. So. Uh, you kind of get the idea of, of the pace of the building that I'm doing now. And, and really, that's what I wanted to get across in this video, is that 
the pace of the building right now is very rapid. I'm building towards the next phase in the space elevator, hoping to unlock some things that maybe I, that I don't even know about at this point. With this pace of building, it is is exciting actually to see actually what what comes next. Oh, that's why I love this game. So, you know, hit that like button if you would for me, please, and help get this video out. Got some exciting news coming up in a new studio that we're going to be filming in that's bigger and going to be better. The sound quality is going to be better. All kinds of things. I'll tell you more details on the new studio we just bought. Uh, we close on it later on this year, but it, it, it's going to be sweet to be in our own self-contained building away from some of the things that go around on around our household with the grandkids. Stay tuned for that because that's coming and uh, hope to see you again in another video. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and look forward to seeing you again. Talk to you later. Bye.